Ah. Oh my gosh, it tried to stab me. Ow, oh, what is happening? Welcome back, or if you're new here, welcome in general, to testing out products that come from Shark Tank or Indiegogo or Kickstarter, any of those kinds of things, to see if they work, if they're actually worth buying and how they're doing now. I love hearing about these stories because I think it's super interesting. It's really hard being an entrepreneur. So I'm always really curious anytime I see clips of the show, um, if these products actually work. So we're gonna test that. And of course, if you're new here and you wanna see more of these, I will link them more at the end of the video. Done a bunch on this channel as well as my other one. And we're gonna start with a skincare brand that I am, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that I haven't talked about yet. And that is Glow Recipe. Now, when I first learned that they were on Shark Tank, I was really surprised because I have been using them for years. They have exploded on the social media world for a while now. And so I thought it was really interesting that they were on Shark Tank. Sarah and Christine actually started Glow Recipe and it was almost like a, a curated collection of Korean skincare products. And they went through this whole vetting process and gauged customer interest. And they really wanted like the best of the best that they were selling. And then eventually they started creating their own stock of products in house. So they went on Shark Tank and they were hoping to get $425,000 for about 10, percent stake in the company. And while none of the deals actually went through, they ended up getting um, some investments through like a private equity firm. And now they're stocked everywhere. I buy them at Sephora and they made like a hundred million dollars in sales, which is insane. Because if you go on the Sephora website, you'll see they have a ton of different products. Their packaging is incredible. It's just so pretty. And the the way the, the bottles are sometimes just, it's very interesting and unique. But I have to say out of everything that I have tried, the one product, if you were gonna try one thing from this brand, it would be their watermelon glow dew drops. I've gone through a big bottle. I actually pulled up, I had a like, you know, those like um, birthday container things. Anyway, I have like a little one here. I use it on my skin today. There was a huge period where I went through and I was using this as a uh, like a primer because it gives you like the, the prettiest glow. I just put hand cream on. I was gonna put it on my hand, but like that's cheating. <laughs> put it on my arm here. Hopefully you can see it. The way it just makes your skin just glow. It's so pretty. Like even all rubbed in, it's still very glowy. I love how it feels on the skin. It just, oh, I went through the entire big bottle of it. This is my, my little guy I'm going through. I've tried some of their other products. I'm like looking at it online now. Oh, I didn't realize they actually, they launched their, their dew drops with uh, like a bronzing element, just like the drunk elephant de bronzy drops. Interesting. Maybe you should try that one. Tried the moisturizer. Um, it was fine. I wasn't thrilled about it. I tried their BHA pore smooth blur drops. Mm, wasn't really excited about it. I liked their plum plump hyaluronic acid moisturizer. I went through all of that. That was really nice. So personally of the products that I have tried, um, I would recommend the nice and my drops. They're amazing. The next one is a little bit weird, but like interesting, the brand is called Funk Off Teeth Refreshers, Funk Off. Don't love the brand name. It just doesn't roll off the tongue. And their product is this two in one teeth cleaner. So it's like a brush and a teeth cleaning gel in one. It was started by friends, Joelle and Sonia, and they were going to like a wine tasting and Joelle just kept going back to the bathroom to clean off her teeth in between so that the wine didn't stain her teeth. But she was bringing like a big thing of toothpaste and a toothbrush to the event. She was committed. But as she was doing this, she was like, why don't I have like a smaller version of this that's like a more portable solution. So which is why they created this like two in one option. There was a lot of back and forth because the company wasn't doing well. They were in the red at the time and they didn't seem to have a really good handle or grasp on the business element of their product and like promoting it properly. So I think a lot of the sharks were out and then I think last minute they got a deal. Um, but the problem is, which happens a lot, is that when you have a, a product that seems really interesting, and it shows up on Shark Tank, it sells out immediately. But they didn't have the capital on hand to restock all of their products immediately, which is super unfortunate. Like that's that's such a, that must be a really tough thing to think through all of the stock issues and like how much do you need to stock in order to like, you know, fulfill all of those potential orders. We don't wanna have too much and have it like sit there. I don't know. It seems like right now they're working on a more international level. They're working with wineries and coffee shops and all of these different places to stock their products. So I think they're still like doing stuff. I got mine off of Amazon and apparently this one brush will last through 30 uses versus just like a disposable one. Twist the bottom eight to 10 times, brush, Rinse, smile. Oh, you do have to rinse. It doesn't have any fluoride in it though. So that's personally one thing that I 
I don't know, maybe it's just me, but like if I was taking this with me somewhere to like brush off my teeth or whatever, it feels weird to me to then go into a public bathroom and like scoop water up. I don't know, like that doesn't seem very cleanly. The packaging's nice. Not sure if those are holes though at the front there. Yep, it is. That seems like a flaw. Because if this is wet or has a gel on it and then I put the lid on and then put it in my purse, then doesn't it just like, leak everywhere? Like I, I, I guess it's for having the product air out a bit so you don't get a bunch of, I don't know, like bacteria on it and stuff, but I would feel uncomfortable by that. So that's what the product looks like. Um, and I guess you just kind of click it up to put it on your teeth and like brush it. Ooh, actually they have a they have a two pack here. I like the blue one. Let's open that one. Ah, oh, look at that. It's such a pretty blue shade. I like that it's the size of a lipstick too. Like it's like small. I still don't love the um, the little diamond sparkle things though. I don't know. Let's go to the bathroom. We're gonna try it. All right, welcome to my bathroom. So we just twist this. Oh, until gel appears. Ta-da! I don't know if you can see that. Hold on, a little gel in the middle there. Amazing. Then I think you just like, you like brush. Those pearly whites, you know? Oh, I just, I realized that while I was blinding you that maybe this is a mirror on the back. I thought it had like a sticker on it and I can't figure it out, but. Yeah, it's a mirror, okay. This isn't a tool to replace brushing because obviously you can't really brush that way. This is just, Get those stains off. It's like mildly minty and then you have to rinse. That's the only part is just like, I don't want to do that in a public bathroom. I don't know. Okay, so then it's clean and then you put the lid on. So I guess as long as this doesn't twist in your bag and you don't leave a ton of water on, this should be fine and it'll just serve as like a ventilation thing. I think there is a market that can absolutely use this. Like if you are prone to staining and you drink a lot of coffee, this would be like a quick little ch -ch -ch kind of thing. And I mean, you just need your water bottle or something, I guess. And then you can do that that way. I personally just use a whitening toothpaste. Like I, I use Sensodyne, like a whitening toothpaste. And I find that does the job for me, but I'm not really a red wine drinker. So I don't know how the staining works or if it's different or whatever. I don't know. I think there's a market for this for sure. It's not something that I would use on a very regular basis myself personally, but um, it does work in terms of like the brush and applicator and everything. So there's that. The next one I want to test out is not one I can actually test out, but I do have people that I want to test it out on. The brand is called Controlled Chaos. It was started by Alana and Maureen and they were looking to create a an all organic, vegan, really good for your hair, curl cream. What they explained was that oftentimes a lot of curl creams were very stiff and they left your curls feeling really crispy and you didn't get these really nice soft curls, which is what their cream does. So up until the point of Shark Tank, they'd been selling into salons, which makes good sense. But then they ran out of money to continue to stock their products. So they stopped making it. But then in the year before they filmed, they had, I think $85,000 in sales and they ran out of money to advertise and continue to create inventory. So they had to stop making the product. In the show, they ended up closing a deal with Lori, but that entirely fell through, as is the case with a lot of Shark Tank things, apparently. However, following the episode, they ended up selling a ton of stock. Now they've bought this like independent distribution facility. They've hired more people and they're making a couple of million in annual revenue. I think like 3.5 million, I have on my notes here. However, as you can see, I don't have curly hair, but I do have a niece who has curly hair. I'm gonna give this to my sister and she's gonna test it out on my niece and we're gonna see, I'm gonna report back. Okay, so an update. So my niece Harley has some form of wavy curly hair. I know it is not straight and I know that the curly and wavy hair community is very specific. So forgive me for not knowing where it is specifically. So what I do know is that she is a very active girl. She has very fine hair, it does frizz without any sort of product in it. So Lauren did a test for me where she showed the curl cream in her hair versus nothing in her hair, just to kind of get a difference and distinction there, because obviously it'd be very different versus like a gel or putting a gel on top, that kind of thing. So I'll put the pictures here. You can see it with the curl cream on. You can definitely see some um, definition 
in there, which was great. It made the, the hair nice and soft and shiny. Obviously not the same as gel, but I know there's like a whole technique for like people with wavy hair. There's like the bowl method and you use the, the mousse and the cream and the gel and like a specific order. I know there's a lot to it. Girls with curly hair, I just, I commend you. I don't know how you do it. And then I'll show you at the end of the night, again, she's a very active girl. She's like running around. They didn't do a whole like diffusing the hair and doing the whole like none of that. So you can see even then afterwards, it's still, she has a lot of definition to her hair versus the side that doesn't, has a little bit more frizz in it. Lauren said she really liked it. She liked the consistency of it. She liked that it didn't weigh her hair down. It didn't make her hair very oily. Again, she has very fine hair. So she really liked it. And so I think what they're gonna do is for any time when she actually wants like a lot of like definition in her curl, they're going to combine and do the cream first and then the gel. But if you have any recommendations, please let a girl know. I would love to pass on some tips and tricks to my sister. It is a very small bottle. That is something to consider. Um, Lauren obviously doesn't need a lot for my niece's hair. So, I mean, obviously different hair textures and amounts is gonna differ a lot. But overall, the product really worked and she really enjoyed it. But again, it's not gonna give you the same definition as like a gel, but I think using them in tandem might be better. Let me, let me know. I don't know a ton about this world. <laughs> okay, this next one I saw on TikTok. I am not convinced that this is actually a thing that will work. However, we'll see. I haven't opened it yet. It's called, it's called, it's called the Dingle Dangle. The Dingle Dangle Baby Toy Headband. Yeah, I believe it was started by two dads because they wanted to have some sort of toy element that would make changing or distracting a child or just even interacting with your child a more fun and easy experience. And if you've ever had to change a kid's diaper in public, you know that you gotta sanitize stuff, you gotta put the mats out, you gotta give them something to teeth on, like there's a, like a process. And so this dad, I guess, in that particular instance was not prepared for that and I feel for him. That's, that's a tough gig. But it did spark some inspiration to create this headband toy thing. It kind of reminds me of the, um, what are those things called over the cribs? The mobiles. It's kind of like a, like a portable mobile for your head. <laughs> and I saw, I forget, I think it was Kevin O'Leary was like demonstrating it in a video. And I was like, mm, I don't think I'm convinced this is going to be a good idea. Fortunately for me, I have so many incredible nieces and nephews. One is four months old. One is five. Oh, it's getting too big. And then two, two and a half year olds. So I have some people to test it on. However, before I do that, I am gonna test it and give my thoughts on it, having changed diapers for three of my own children. So first and foremost, I will say that the quality of this product seems very good. Like there's a, this feels solid. I like the fact that each of these pieces you can take off and wash them, I assume. You can check that dingle dangle. Oh, I lied. Don't machine wash these. Don't do that. You can only surface wipe the product with a baby soap and water. Seems very delicato. To be completely honest, I feel like I would ignore that. I mean, don't because then you're just wasting money if it doesn't work, but just so you know, <laughs> that's what I would do. Okay, so the product. So remember how I said it was kind of like a portable mobile? Well, good news, it is also a mobile. So it has this little piece here that attaches to a crib, I believe, just like the rods of it, I assume. Yeah, and then it'll like clamp on to that. Now, I will say um, that will probably work for my crib. I'm gonna go check that downstairs. I will check it. Mine is more square. Let's see if I can open it up more. Oh no, okay, I lied. Looks like it'll fit on a bunch of different sizes. That's good. Put clips on there. Then you put this guy in and then I just clamp on this guy. Boop, ta-da! And I assume it just sits over the crib like this. Doesn't do anything, but it does make noise, so that's nice. Now, would I put this on a crib? Let's talk about that. I would put this on a crib or in a pack and play scenario if I am trying to keep my kid in a spot housed while I do something like make dinner or something and I'm trying to distract them. This would not be something I would put in a crib if I'm trying to get them to sleep. This might also be fun to like encourage them to like stand or kneel or crawl towards something. That'd be kind of fun. I wonder if it works on the side, like on a side crib element. Probably not, it'll probably fall down, but anyway. The other option is using the puffer fish, which has two ends here. One, 
squish it around. <laughs> Two, and now it's like a little handheld rattle. Also very cute, very thoughtful. I like that there are multiple elements to this and also from like a business perspective, I think it'd be a good idea because you could, you could create so many of these. You could create different styles of these, different colorways. You could do a whole set or series of them for the rattle versus the, the overhanging one. You could work with like popular kids shows and stuff and create their own like little mini ones. And then of course, the, the reason that I saw it, which was for diaper change scenarios. Does this go the other way? Why isn't this going on? There we go. Okay, so you put this on your head like an elephant. Oh no, more of a unicorn. I can see my son absolutely using this to just like, just like hit people, you know? <laughs> and then you put this guy on like that. Now how do I make this so that it doesn't fall down? Tightly fa fastened and worn on the brow of your head, the brow of your head. Okay, so. I just, want, I just want it clear that I see brow of the head, the brow of the head. I assume they mean the forehead, not the actual brows, because if you look at the picture, I mean, I don't think that's where his brows are. This would be a lot of setup when you're trying to also contain a child. I don't know who has the time to set this all up. Oh, it keeps slipping off. Okay, there we go. I think we're good now. Ah! <laughs> well, that was dangerous. Already not a good sign, not not a good sign. Goes in here and it should just cl click in place. Why isn't it doing that? Okay. That was um, a little bit scary. Now we have it here, we're ready. <laughs> so I'm gonna say right out loud right now in front of everyone, I would never use this. I would never ever do this, I just, no, because one, if you're taking this in to a public place to change your child, you have to set this all up. So are you holding your kid and trying to put this on? Are you placing your kid down, the one you're trying to distract from touching things and allowing them time to touch things while you set this, this up? You have a kid who's crying on the thing with the dirty diaper and you're just gonna like pull this out and like set it up. No, now using this to like play? Maybe. I would put this on if my niece or nephew gave me smiles and giggles and cackles. That would be 100% worth it to me. I love the fact that there are different options and ways to use this. It is feeling very heavy on my forehead though. First, we're gonna go downstairs and we're gonna see if it fits on my crib. That's number one. Number two, I am going to give this to Lo and I'm gonna have her test it with her four month old and we will report back. Okay, this is where the crib is currently being housed in the basement it's goners in a big boy bed. I don't want to talk about it, but it does fit on my like thicker railing here. Even this one, honestly, that's kind of impressive. So let's screw this on here. It's very difficult to do one hand, hang on. I guess technically it's kind of like dangling down a bit, but like, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need a, a an actual baby's thoughts on this. See now, if I was changing her though, and she has a grip on, <laughs> you'd have to like, kind of go like this to get them or something, which is kind of annoying. And now I wanna go on to one that I actually saw on TikTok and I was like, ooh, I'm really genuinely curious about this. And it's called the Tucky. It's like a Tucky belt kind of scenario. It was started by a girl named Brooke and she was looking for ways to give sort of a, a cropped vibe to her outfit. So she was like tucking her sweaters and stuff into her bra, but that kept falling out and like just wasn't working. So she created this basically like band that holds itself in place and you can allow for that like tucked look, but it's gonna like stay put, which I think could be brilliant. She ended up closing a deal with one of the sharks. She sold out of all of her inventory and had a pre-order for like a month. And I think right now she's working with uh, Damon's creative marketing agency right now. And it turns out when I went on the website to order, they had not only just the Tucky, but they also had another product that I'm kind of excited to try. They have what's called the Stitchy. And what the Stitchy is supposed to do is um, give you like a temporary fix to um, stitch a product together, to stitch like a your bra strap to a sleeve or um, to hem something, again, temporarily, but just something that's gonna give that like customized thing, but it's not gonna be permanent. Your wardrobe superhero, exciting. So we got that, 
But we also got the tucky. Let's tuck. This is what it looks like. It's like a big, thick band kind of a thing. It is pink. And on the inside, on the inside, just on the one side, I had to check, it has a little bit of like a silicone-ness, I guess, to keep it grippy, you know? I guess we need to try this with some of my longer sweaters and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is pretty oversized. I know it has like a pocket, I like I know, but I wanna see if I can get like a cute, you know? Just like a little, like a baby tuck to start. All right, so how do I do this? I guess undo this part. And I want to go on this little part here and I want it up here. Oh, that's too tight. Okay, so you put this where you want it. Not too tight, they said, which is good because I would hate it if it was too tight. And then I just tuck this in all the way around. I feel like maybe this this is not the right sweater for this. I think it's, no. Let me try one without the like kangaroo pouch. So I was thinking something like this, where it's like it's a matching set, but maybe I don't want it to be you know, like a full length kind of thing. So then can I tuck this under and it'll like hold it there. That was really what I wanted to see. Like what would happen, like what does it look like if I go like this, you know? I feel like if I'm moving around, this is still too loose. So I need it more, more snug. So you saw the before, now this is the after. Man, I wish these pants didn't have these stupid strings. I hate pants with strings, it's like, why did I buy this? I know why I bought this. This was um, a pandemic purchase with a newborn. But like, how much better does it look without? Oh, it looks so much better. Okay, so how do we feel about that as a concept? Is it staying up while I move around? Is it going to fall out? This, <laughs> honestly, it's holding pretty well. Like, obviously it's just a front tuck. I don't normally do front tucks. I feel like they look really dumb on me. If anything, what I would do, I'll show you what I would do. I would want it to go like this and make it a back tuck. Cause that's how, I don't know if you've seen any of my videos before, but that's typically what I do and I'll just tuck it into my pants. I don't know, I just, I, I like the vibe more with a, with a back tuck than a front tuck. For the sake of argument, can I do all the way around? Then you just have like a crappie sweater. Does it look weird that it's tucked under like this? Is that like a weird look or is that fine? Cause like when I go like this, it's like, oh, that's not tucked into her pants at all. It's like, where is it? You know, I think I, I tried once. I think I tried tucking my shirt into my bra once. And I think it was at the cottage and everyone was like, what are you doing? Where is that being, like, where does it go? And I'm like, it's in my bra, Never mind. So, I mean, it is it is very secure. If you like a, like a tucked vibe, I mean, it is holding up. It isn't uncomfortable because again, it's my shirt that's there, right? I think this would be really good too if you have a couple of sweaters and you're like, I want them, I wanna get the most wear out of them, you know? So maybe for one look, you want like the full length and then for another, you want like a crop moment. That would be a fun way to like switch it up. You can also do it obviously for t-shirts. I've seen people do it where um, they have a sweater over top of a dress. So like you have this like tucked so it looks like a skirt and then a shirt on, which I think is so cute. I don't wear a lot of dresses myself, but I can see that being like a really good purpose for it. Let me know what you think. And if you've tried the, the tucky belt, I would say this wouldn't be something that I'd wanna wear all the time. I wouldn't do this for all of my sweaters because it is bunching up a lot in the back. But for a t-shirt, obviously it's not gonna be as like bunchy, you know? I don't know, I think, I think it's kind of cool. Okay, as someone who has no experience with any sort of sewing at all. This stitchy thing came with zero instructions. So I went on their website and I just typed in how to, hoping I would come across something. They have nothing, nothing on their website. No instructions, didn't come with any instructions, nothing. By the way, these stitches are plastic. So any um, anybody out there who does stitching that I don't know if that's good or not. I took off the lid, the lid is off. So it's like a little needle thing here. And then I guess, uh, I don't know. I have a shirt here that I was just going to experiment on and see. So if I go like this and I put this in, uh, nervous cause it's a needle, so like this. Ah, oh my gosh, it tried to stab me. Oh, what is happening? I put the thing in this way because that, that seems to be where it, where it goes. Put it in like that. Carefully put the needle back in. Which way? I don't know. The lid on for a second. Oh. No, nope. this is how you keep it on there. No, nope. I just wanna hem some stuff. Oh my gosh, I'm so lost. I don't know who your target audience was for this, but it wasn't me. 
Did that do anything? Dented one of the little plastic things, all right. I have looked up tutorials. I've even looked up tutorials for other micro stitching machines to see if I could figure it out and um, I got nothing. It does have a nice little needle vibe though that I need to keep away from my children. Um, I don't know. I don't know how this works. If you have any recommendations or things that I'm doing wrong, please let me know. But um, I can't fix this if you don't give me instructions to fix this. Tucky. I don't know guys, I can't figure it out. Oh, and I actually forgot, I, I filmed one a while ago because I needed some time to test it. Hello all, I'm here from a past video. If you know which video, let me know in the comments. To tell you about another Shark Tank product that I wanted to have some time to really like test out and practice because I feel like it needs some time. And that is called the fidget game. This was started by a former teacher named Brandy who was, she had her master's in education. She was a reading specialist as well as an ESL specialist. And she really wanted to focus on making reading and learning to read really easy for kids. And so she created this game that basically is a combination of different like sight words and bubble popping, just making the experience fun. So I have a little guy who is not reading yet because he's, I guess by the time you're watching this, probably four. Oh, he's getting so big. He's obviously not reading yet, but he will be going to kindergarten next year. And I want to help him with um, just letter recognition and stuff. So I'm gonna be going through this and I'm not expecting like reading from this, but I am curious how he does with the actual game itself. And we'll see from there. I think Brandy ended up taking a deal with Barbara and I think it was like $500,000 or something like that for 15% equity and as of right now she's been you know really focusing on making the fidget game kind of go international and she's trying to translate it into different languages and all that fun stuff so really exciting so um we're gonna give this a go and i will report back my thoughts okay so update so this isn't a great game <laughs> I'm, I'm running a bath right now in case you're wondering what that noise is this isn't a great game for connor's age group so like the pre-k it's just like this is the youngest it goes and he's just not there i'm sure some kids are but he's just not there in terms of getting the words however we've been lining them up with like the squares and stuff at the bottom and he's pointing out letters he knows and it corresponds with like these things it's just it's kind of a tricky workaround i can see this being helpful for kids that are like farther into kindergarten or you know any of the other grades that it's for it's cute it's a way of um, making the learning process of, you know, learning these sight words a little bit more fun and different. And I like that. It's good quality. They have a ton of these little popper things, which Connor really loved. So overall, it works really well. It's cute. It's just not pre-K, I would say. Let me know in the comments, have you tried any of these products before or have you come across anything on Shark Tank that we should try out next time, either on this channel or my other channel? Let me know. I would love to hear from you. Check out these videos on the side as well. I will link all of the um, Shark Tank products for you so you can go and check out all of those as well. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. New videos here every single Thursday. I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic, fantastic day and I'll see you guys all in the next one.